Hi, welcome to the 3D pen then. As you start using your 3D pen, you will soon find out that getting a nice, smooth, finished, multicolored surface is not easy. Yes, you can sand for hours, caulk, sand some more and paint. However, in some cases, there is a faster way. So let's look at our options. And if you plan to actually try this, stick around till the end. I will give you some important troubleshooting tips and also pros and cons of this method so you can decide if it's appropriate for your project. I am going to use 3D Mate Matte for this just because it's way faster and more precise but if you don't have one yet you may need to do it the old-fashioned way, with graph paper and a ruler. Overlaying the different grids of the 3D Mate Matte creates hundreds of possible pattern combinations. So play and find some you like. For this video, let's start with a simple black and white one. Once you find the perfect placement, join the corners so it stays put in the oven. I like to bake on a tile covered with silicone bake mat. What you bake on and the type of your toaster oven will affect the baking times and temperatures, so test yours first. My previous oven was smaller and when I got this one I had to double my baking times to get the same results. So take this time and temperature only as a recommendation and go by watching your own results. The two grids will fuse into a single layer that will rest completely flat on the work surface which will be important for the next step. It is helpful to be able to remove the project immediately onto a cold tile to cool. Hence the bake mat. If it's sitting directly on the hot tile, you won't be able to slide it off this quickly. Here it is, all in one piece, with a flat bottom, which will eventually become the top. So you have to plan in a reverse, which I evidently wasn't, because I would prefer the white line on top of my project. So I will make another one before we go any further. Press in each newly filled segment, so the fill sticks to the black and white lines of the grid. If you don't have a finger guard, use some other tool to press it down. Working on a sprayed plexiglass or a real glass will let you check the other side as you go, which makes planning in a reverse a lot easier. Looks good already, but you can still see the lines in the plastic. So now it's time to melt those away. Before you put it in the oven, check for any pinholes openings. Put it on a light box or a window and close any gaps where the light shows through with your wood burning smoothing tool. Be as thorough as you can, because the, as the plastic shrinks, all those gaps you have missed will open into larger holes, giving you trouble later on. I clean my hot tools as I go on a piece of cardboard and a steel wool pad 
to avoid contaminating colors and putting any burned residue back onto my project. Think of it as washing your brush. What will happen to all the holes you missed which is a way harder to fix later so do a good job while it's easy this time I will put it on broil since I want to melt the top faster than the bottom and again you will have to experiment with times and temps it's like baking cookies you have to know your oven go buy what you see Watch your surface closely and when it's shiny and leveled, take it out. When it's done, take it off the tile. Give it a few seconds until the plastic solidifies a bit and cover it with another tile to prevent any warping during the cooling process. Having cold tile on both sides also really speeds up the cooling process. Not totally perfect, but pretty good shiny surface. I am happy. Now, before you go try this, a few important points. PLA is made from organic materials, so it should be just like baking cookies. But I don't really know what all else is in it. So use as many ventilating measures as you can and possibly wear a respirator. Speaking of dedicated equipment, some colors of filament will stain your silicone baking mats, usually the intense reds, blues and yellows. So for those you may choose to bake on parchment paper to keep your mats clean. Now what do you do if you missed some of those pesky gaps and you get a hole in your surface during baking? I left one potential gap in this one sample so I can show you. The moment you see a hole opening up, slide it out briefly. Grease your needle so it doesn't stick to the plastic. And mend the gap. You will totally mess up the plastic all around that spot. But the idea is just to close the hole. and then return it to the oven as soon as possible and let the surface level off again. This is kind of a last resort fix. You don't want to be fixing too many holes like this because the plastic hardens fast so you have a limited time to do this in. Couple of tiny pits but the split is gone. As with all techniques you have to decide if this is the right one for your project. So here are a few pros and cons to help you decide. And there are a few more pros and cons that actually deserve a closer look. Here are two samples, unbaked and baked coaster. And you may decide the first surface is actually already good enough and you want to stop right there and not risk the unpredictability of the baking process. With these castle part samples, I actually preferred an un unbaked one for this project because the matte surface and the unbaked lines look more like the strata in the stones. So all these decisions are very project specific. Yes, it will smooth without sanding, but only on flat surfaces. So if you are making flat shapes to achieve color patterns to create components for later projects, this is way faster than sanding, caulking and painting. The good news is there are ways to shape these later. The bad news is that it has its limitations. This castle tower was shaped after baking. And so was this bracelet. But for small, delicate sculpting projects, I'm sorry to say, you will still need to smooth and sand. 
Baking opens a door to a lot of cool techniques that you can't achieve any other way. But most of them have one common problem, air bubbles. You can achieve cool patterns by laminating multiple layers. <music> As long as the surface is not solid, even the back of it looks great. Here the front looks great, but the back side not so much. The air trapped under the pieces creates bubbles on the bottom of the surface. I tried everything I could think of to get rid of them, but haven't succeeded yet. So if anyone has solved this problem already, please leave me a message in the comments. And by the way, you can do all this fun texture embossing with baking. So I think it's definitely worth experimenting with, even if the underside is not perfect yet. it where the underside doesn't show until we solve this one. No time left in this video to even scratch the surface of what's possible with heat. So subscribe and hit the notification bell to stay tuned for the next one. Mm -hmm.